In the vast ocean of wisdom of the Holy Quran, there is one special pearl that shines brighter than the rest, an ayat that Allah Almighty Himself has singled out among the other ayats and made it the greatest ayat of the Quran. This ayat, shrouded in mystery and secrets, holds a deep meaning and power that many Muslims, unfortunately, are unaware of. And this ayat is Ayat Al-Kursi, the 255, Ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah, the cow. Ayat Al-Kursi is called the greatest ayat of the Quran for a reason, because it contains many different secrets and mysteries, which we will tell you in this video with the permission of God. But before we begin, let's make as many people as possible aware of this important knowledge. Like this video, share it with your friends, and leave your thoughts in the comments. And be sure to watch to the end, so you don't miss any valuable details and there will be more than a few. Ubay ibn Qab narrated, One day the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, asked me, O Abu munzir do you know which ayat from the Book of Allah is the greatest? I said, This is an ayat that says, Allah, God the Lord, there is no deity worthy of worship except Him, the living, the eternal, that is the ayat al-Kursi. After that the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, slapped me on the chest and said, May you be happy in knowledge, O Abu munzir And it is also reported that Abu Zar al-Ghifari, may Allah be pleased with him, said, One day I went into the sacred mosque, and when I saw the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, sitting alone, I sat down to him and asked, O Messenger of Allah, which ayat of those sent down to you is the best? He said, Ayat al-Kursi, the seven heavens, compared to the throne, al-Kursi, are like only a ring thrown in the desert. The superiority of the throne over the throne is like the superiority of this desert over the ring thrown in it. Ibn Masud, may Allah be pleased with him, said, Allah has not created anything in heaven or earth that would be more magnificent than the ayat of al-Kursi. After transmitting these words, the transmitter of Sufyan ibn Wayn said, The fact is that the ayat al-Kursi are the words of Allah, God Lord, and the words of Allah, God Lord, exceed any of his creations in heaven and earth. Ayat al-Kursi is not just a collection of words. It is a treasure trove of wisdom and power that can change a person's life. But why is this ayat considered the greatest of all ayats of the Holy Quran? Prophet Muhammad blessings and peace be upon him revealed this mystery to us. He said that the greatness of Ayat al-Kursi lies in its content, in the essence of its message. It reminds us that the Lord, the creator of all things, the Lord has divine qualities and the Lord alone is worthy of worship. Ayat al-Kursi is the shield of the believer, protecting him from evil and temptation. It has the power to ward off devils, bring peace and tranquility to the heart, strengthen faith and bring us closer to our Lord. Ayat al-Kursi is the key to spiritual growth to obtaining the blessing and protection of the Almighty. There are also a number of moments when it is desirable to recite Ayat al-Kursi. First, it is advisable to read this Ayat after entering a house or apartment. First, it is advisable to read this Ayat after entering a house or apartment. Ibn Masud, may Allah be pleased with him, told, One day a man from among the companions of Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, met a man from among the jinn. They began to fight, and the man overcame them. The jinn told him, let's do it again. But the man overpowered him again. Then the man said, truly I see that you are weak, and your wrists are like a dog's wrist. Is that what you look like, O community of jinn, or is it just you? He replied, no, by Allah, I have power among them. But let's fight again, and if you defeat me, then I'll teach you something that will benefit you. They began to fight again, and the man defeated them again. Then the jinn said, I will teach you what I promised. Do you read the ayat of Al-Kursi? He replied, yes. The jinn said, indeed, if you read this ayat when you go home, then shaitan will definitely come out of there and will not return there until morning. When Ibn Masud heard this story, he asked him, O Abu Abdul Rahman, who was that man from among the companions? Is it not Umar? To which Ibn Masud said, and who could be him besides Umar? May Allah be pleased with him. Secondly, it is advisable to read the Ayat al-Kursi in the morning and evening. It is reported from Ubayyah ibn Kaaba that one day his supply of dates was decreasing and one night he decided to guard them. Then he saw someone like an adult youth whom he greeted and asked, Who are you, a jinn or a human? He replied, The genie. Ubay said, Give me your hand. When he extended his hand to him, he discovered that his hand was like a dog's paw with dog hair. Ubay asked, 
is this how jinn are created? He said, the jinn know that none of them is stronger than me. Ubai asked, what brings you here? He said, it has come to our attention that you like to do sadaka, that is, give alms and donations. So we have come to take food from you. Ubai asked, what protects us from you? The jinn replied, ayat al-kursi from Surah al-Baqarah. Whoever reads this ayat in the morning will be protected from us until evening, and whoever reads it in the evening will be protected from us until morning. When dawn broke, Ubay came to the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, and told him everything, to which the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, replied, he told the truth even though he is bad. Thirdly, it is advisable to read the ayat al-Kursi before going to bed. It is reported that one day, when Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, was guarding the collected zakat, he caught a thief who told him, Let me go and I will teach you words that Allah will make useful to you. Abu Huraira asked, What are these words? He said, When you go to bed, read the ayat al-Kursi from beginning to end, and you will always have a guardian from Allah with you, and shaitan will not be able to approach you until the morning. After that, Abu Huraira told the Prophet about it. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, and he said, He really told you the truth, despite the fact that he, a notorious liar. After which the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, told Abu Huraira that it was Shaitan himself in human form. Fourth, it is advisable to recite the Ayat al Kursi after completing the obligatory prayers. The Messenger of Allah, blessings and peace be upon him, said, Whoever recites the Ayat al Kursi after the obligatory prayer, will be under the protection of Allah until the next prayer. And also the Messenger of Allah, blessings and peace be upon him, said, whoever recites the Ayat al-Kursi, after completing each obligatory prayer, nothing will prevent him from entering paradise, except that he must first die. However, it is important to realize that reading this Ayat does not automatically guarantee entry into paradise. Good deeds are the key to paradise. True faith manifests itself not only in words and in the worship of our Lord, but also in our actions. The recitation of the Ayat of Al-Kursi should be accompanied by a sincere desire for good deeds, observance of God's commandments, and renunciation of the forbidden. Remember that the path to paradise is the path of goodness. In today's world full of hustle and bustle and distractions, it is so important to find a place of peace and solitude to commune with the Almighty. Many people ask themselves, where is the best place to pray at home or in a mosque? The Messenger of Allah, blessings and peace be upon him, said, The best prayer is the one that a person performs at home. The Messenger of Allah, blessings and peace be upon him, also said, Don't turn your houses into graves and don't turn visiting my grave into a holiday. This hadith reminds us that our faith should not be limited to worship rituals and outward appearances. True faith lives in our hearts, it is manifested in our actions, and in our attitudes towards people and the world around us. Therefore, let us endeavor to create an atmosphere of worship in our homes so that they become a place of retreat with our Lord, a source of spiritual strength and inspiration. In this hadith, the Messenger of Allah, blessings and peace be upon him, forbids his companions to deprive their homes of such acts as praying and addressing their Lord in them, thus turning them into graves. The Messenger of Allah, blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, also forbade his companions to visit his grave and gather around it all the time, because this is a way that leads to his excessive exaltation and subsequently to polytheism. And now let us read the semantic translation of this ayat. Allah, God, Lord, there is no deity worthy of worship except him, the living, the almighty. Neither drowsiness nor sleep possess him. To him belongs all that is in heaven and all that is on earth. Who will intercede with him without his permission? He knows their future and their past. They comprehend from his knowledge only what he desires. His power encompasses the heavens and the earth and does not burden him to protect them, for the Lord is all-powerful and exists beyond time and space. He is the Supreme, the Great One. We ask the Lord Great and Holy that he help all people and guide all people on the right path. We also ask for his help and protection. May the mercy of the Lord always be upon us and upon you, dear viewers. God bless you all.